our good friend and AM Northwest regular, Vicki Norris. Hi, Vicki. Hi. Always good to have you here. Thank you. So we always have you helping us out with clutter problems yeah. and out in the field and things like that. Uh, this is your first book. It is. Did you find being an organized person that organizing for writing a book was a little different? This was one of the hardest things I've done in my career, actually, Carl, because I am such an outgoing, motivated, busy person all the time, out there helping people get organized, that to sit down and write and be you know, secluded was almost torture. But I think as the saying goes, I like to have written. Writing itself was a hard process, but I like to have written. Well, and you're going to be able to help a lot of people. I mean, you helped me with my office years ago. And let, let's, so let's talk about how we can help folks out there who are disorganized, because D this organization is kind of like debt, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just weighs heavy on your mind. It is, and we respond to disorganization in the same way that we respond to debt. I mean, it's a liability in our lives. We're stressed out. We're anxious. We're wasteful, which is the same thing we are with debt. Right. And so we come up with all of these means of coping with disorganization. One of them I call the balance transfer, where we just kind of shuffle the principle of our disorganization around. To a different room. Right, to a different room. We kind of relocate the clutter. And then um, one is the interest-only payment, where we kind of try to do the minimum possible just to keep our head above water. So there's a lot of ways that we cope with our disorganization. So I imagine your book is going to be a great gift. You know, some people might go to the book, the bookstore and say, "Oh, I need help." But you'd be a great gift for somebody that you know, you know, has that problem just a little bit because a lot of us go kind of up and down. We get, you know, we clean up our room, we get all organized and we let it become, you know, it's kind of binging and purging before organizing. <laughs> you know, why do we do that? Why do we go through periods of being organized and then another period of not so organized and you know, I think it's telling because we haven't really gotten down to the causes of our disorganization. It's kind of like we lop off the top of the weed, but we never pull out the root. No kidding. And so with organizing, it's so important to really get in and find out what your causes of disorganization are. And I talk about that a little bit, you know, whether it's been situation or family background or just bad habits, social influence by which we become disorganized. Are you Right. You mentioned when you were organizing me, which you did a great job, is that some of us need to be able to see everything right in front of us, and some of us like drawers we can put things away in. You kind of have to figure out what kind of person you are and how you work best, don't you? That's so important. You hit it on the head. Good organizing is always about the person. It's about the individual. Because and you can so buy as many fancy file folders as you want, but you're not gonna, if you don't use them, what's the point? Exactly. And it's not about the product. It's about the process. So many people run to Costco and get that big white hunk of plastic with the seven drawers, you know, yeah. come back and throw it at their problem, or they think it's about the color-coded files, when really it's about figuring out what makes sense to you and your lifestyle that's very individualized. So will your book tell us about how to get started? I mean, imagine everybody's going, okay, I have a plan, this is right. what I'm going to do. Um, that might not be the way that you actually start the process, right? Yeah, you know, I have found that sort of the, the traditional version of organizing in the marketplace is about quick tips, it's about um, you know, quick little makeovers, order in a hurry. But I've found that to really do organizing right, you have to dig out and dig in, which means you have to figure out how you got here, and then you have to set up good systems for going forward. And so many people, Carl, don't know how to get started. And so they think they should sit down and come up with this big, complicated game plan. And, and I really think organizing is more of an organic process. It develops as it goes. And I talk about how you can do that and, and uh, really create systems that make sense for you. Who are the people who are hardest to organize? Is, is it people who just can't let go of the things that they, you know, old old files, old, uh, you know, who knows pack what, they, pack rats, they just can't let go of things? Well, you know, there is a segment of the population, um, and it's actually a real condition called chronic disorganization. And it's about 2% of the population, and they have a very hard time letting go. You know, we see these people on Dateline, right. where you can barely make a path through their house. Right. And uh, what we find is that for them, it is a slower process. It takes a lot longer. You have to look at it as, as an investment over the long haul. But there is always hope. I believe that organizing is about a higher quality of life. And there is hope for all of us who are disorganized. So if I get the book and I start reading, am I going to start organizing after chapter one? Or is it going to have to get through the no, whole book? No, I'm so glad you asked that. One of the things that I really recommend is people get through the whole book.
they get through the whole book because at the beginning of the book I talk about organizing truths and the middle section is organizing principles and then at the end I talk about organizing strategies because everyone wants to jump in and start madly you know purging and tossing and I think that we really short circuit the process if we don't understand like I said how we got here and really some strategies and principles before we get into the nitty-gritty all right, now what made you such an organized freak? <laughs> no, no, what made you an organized <laughs> person? I'll translate. Her. No, I'll she knows I love her. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of it has to do with your family background. Of course, there's always nature and nurture, but I, I really think for me that I was, I really was born organized. I loved to organize. When I was little, I'd have my girlfriends over for sleepovers, and instead of, you know, watching a movie, I'd say, "You want to pull everything out of the closet?" And you know. Back it. Or, <laughs> What a party at Vicky's house. Oh, my goodness. So I just always have loved doing that. I think I had my start when I was young. But, you know, some people embrace order because they grew up with order. Sometimes they rebel because sure. they grew up with order. So I talk about that a little bit as well in terms of understanding your his historical background. Interesting. So let's tell everybody that Vicky's book is Restoring Order. It'll help us all, hopefully. But we also want to help you out as well. Somebody in our audience is going to get help from Vicky. If you can't find your kid's homework, you don't know where you put the bills, you missed your last dentist appointment because it's sitting someplace where you forgot about it. Your dream of uh, clearing the clutter and purging the paper could become a reality. One lucky viewer is going to win Ooh. professional organi organization help from Vicki and uh, she will restore order into your life. So for more details on this contest and how to enter, go to our website at Ann Northwest, the homepage at katu.com, click on the contest, you'll learn how you can enter and then we'll show you how it works out with Vicki's help. Vicki, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you Good so much. Good luck with the book. We'll be right back with more of Ann Northwest.